everyone and I hope you're all doing well out there and welcome back to the channel for another 1-6 scale figure unboxing and review and today we're going to be having a look at XO6's take on Patrick Stewart as he appears as Admiral Picard from season 3 of the TV show Picard. Uh, the review will take the usual format, we'll have a quick look at the box, then we'll be jumping down to the table for a look at all the accessories, then it'll be out with the Starfleet Admiral himself onto the stand and the turntable for a close-up look. Then we'll be wrapping the whole thing up with the usual showcase at the end. Uh, before we get into it though, I'd just like to say a huge thank you to everybody who's subscribed to the channel for all the support that you've given us. It really, really is greatly appreciated. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notification icon. We have lots more content coming up on the channel, um, some of which we'll review before we go over to the uh, mini showcase at the end. Uh, a little bit of background, as viewers to my channel will know, I am a confirmed Trekkie. I grew up with the original series. I loved The Next Generation in the 80s and 90s. I drifted away a bit with things like DS9, Voyager and Enterprise. And it's fair to say that uh, Discovery and Strange New Worlds nearly killed my passion for with their utter awfulness. Uh, as did the first two seasons of uh, Picard, for that matter. But don't string me up on this one. Uh, this is just my opinion. Um, but then season three of Picard came along. And I wasn't even going to watch that after the first two train wrecks. But I'm so glad I did. And what a turnaround it was. I don't know if it's down to the nostalgia uh, and the return of the rest of the crew. Or whether it was putting the show back in the hands of one writer and showrunner, uh, Terry Matalas. But what we got was, in my opinion, some of the best TV Star Trek in the last 30 years. Um, but that's enough of my, my Trekkie ramblings. Uh, let's have a look at this box. And it's fair to say it's up to the usual high standards that we get from XO6. Very, very well presented. Um, it's quite small. Uh, it's super high gloss. So if you're getting any reflections uh, or any glare, I do apologise from the lights. Uh, but yeah, what you've got on the front here is a picture of the... Uh, of the figure itself as i said super high gloss uh, as is this section at the top here it says uh, jean-luc picard admiral uh, one six scale figure in the bottom left hand corner you've got uh, picard star trek uh, the star the starfleet emblem xo6 in the top left hand corner and as with most of um, xo6 star trek figures these days you've got this super high gloss a picture of the uh, character himself and then well, these are artist renditions uh, of all the characters as well from uh, uh, from the TV show Picard running down the side there uh, just very very nice and there's obviously a picture of uh, uh, of the Enterprise there bring it round on the back here uh, we have the usual warnings the there's pictures of the accessories there's a picture of the figure uh, the credits, the usual warnings, the contents, uh, your warnings are at the bottom here. Don't piss this figure off or it may demote you to Ensign. Uh, bring it round to the other side and we've got uh, this emblem at the bottom that says Star Trek Museum, replicas, replicas and collectibles. Admiral Jean-Luc Picard again uh, and Picard Star Trek there at the top. Um, nothing on the top of any real note other than a, a replication of the, uh, of the logo and the picture. Uh, on the bottom, nothing of note either. Um, it's a slipcover design, so we'll, we'll just pull this off. It's literally brand new, this figure. It's just come through the door. Was delayed for some time uh, getting here. Let's just say political reasons and a slow boat from China, shall we say. But it's finally arrived and gone straight under the, uh, under the camera. Uh, the uh, seals are still intact, so this is a voyage of discovery. Forgive the pun for all of us. Yeah, and what you've got is an, uh, a clear plastic window here with the figure underneath um, and nothing else really of note other than some more credits on the back here, uh, including the uh, uh, Nanjin Tam himself, the uh, the man behind X06. So, yeah, uh, and uh, ironically, the consultant here was uh, Terry Matalas. There you go. I've only just noticed that. So, yeah, uh, without further ado, uh, let's uncork this vintage find out if uh, if it's matured well let's break those seals uh, and dive down onto the table and have a look at all the accessories that come with admiral picard 
Okay, so here we are down on the table with all the accessories that come with your Admiral Picard figure. Uh, we'll start with the hands as we always do. You know me and my hands. Uh, there's a pair already on the figure itself. They're open palm relaxed hands and it also get these uh, four hands as well. So you've got uh, six hands in total, three pairs. Uh, let's grab a one at random and take a look at the quality. Um, the sculpt looks pretty good. It looks like it's up to uh, XO6's high standards. You've got uh, some nice paint applications there. There's some reddening on the knuckles. You've got fingernails. There's creases in the palms. Yeah, just very, very good. Uh, the usual, as I say, the usual XO6 high standards. I don't know whether the camera's picking this up, but what we've actually got on the back here as well are age spots. Um, they've uh, painted in some age spots as well, which is... Uh, very very <laughs> a nice little touch and, and and very accurate so yeah it's uh, uh up to the usual high standards let's do the flexibility test uh what we're looking at here is a oh, medium to hard erring on the side of hard i would say so uh, depending on the uh, uh on how this has been sculpted we'll see if it's a hairdryer or hot water job for holding the phaser i'm assuming this is the phaser holding hand but yeah uh very good sculpt Great paint applications. Let's grab another one at random. Let's take one of the fisted hands and take a look at that. Yeah, same story here. Good bone work. Great veining there. Uh, some nice paint applications. Reddening on the knuckles. Yep, just very good. Uh, uh, as expected. Some quality hands there from XO6. So uh, let's put those to one side. What else do you get with your figure? Uh, at this point as well, um, it's fair to note that I believe there were two versions of this figure. Um, I think if you ordered directly from XO6, and if I'm getting this wrong, please correct me in the comment section below. Um, I believe there were two versions. If you ordered directly from XO6 themselves, what you got was a replica Admiral's pin badge, as, as you can see on the box here, full-size replica of that, and a signature card. Uh, if it went through a third party, like this one did, uh, unfortunately those weren't present. So um, th this figure is the, uh, shall we say, the standard version for, for argument's sake. But yeah, well, let's crack on. You get the usual uh, XO6 stand, uh, the hexagonal stand that we've sort of come to know and love from XO6. Um, all plastic. Um, you've got some, you've got the uh, CBS uh, logo and uh, rights reserve sign on the side there. But yeah, it's got this clear plastic top section, uh, the uh, slot for the crotch grabber itself, uh, and uh, which is removable. Well, actually, we'll do this on camera because it explains this other accessory as well. What you need to do, first of all, is just remove the, and I find it easy just to get your hands in here and, and give this, this thing a push, is remove the the uh, holder, the crotch grabber holder, uh, then it's a case of getting your fingers underneath here and removing this, this clear plastic top, which sometimes can be difficult, uh, especially with new ones, and this is a new one, so bear with me if this wants to open. There we go, finally. Oh no, this other side now. <laughs> this is the problem, is that one side comes off, the other side goes back on. Um, so we'll put that to one side, uh, and as I say, usual story here with the uh, interchangeable plastic uh, inserts for the uh, for the stand itself. You get this one, which is obviously meant to replicate the transporter, or you can actually pop this one in, which is simply a case of placing it into the uh, uh, into the stand uh, and re reattaching this section, then the crotch grabber. Um, this is designed to go with these pieces. Uh, now these basically clip on the sides here, and you can attach it to other X06 uh, bases. So if you've got several figures, you can attach them using these clips uh, and, and make up one large platform for all of the figures to go on. Uh, me personally, I prefer this one and I'll be using that one in the display, but it's an option there if you want to use it. And if you're an X06 collector with lots of figures, uh, it's a great way of uh, displaying, uh, displaying them. So uh, yep, the usual stuff going on with the stand there. Also comes with the standard issue crotch grabber that we've come to expect from uh, X06. So yep, that's there as well. Uh, what else? Just two other accessories. You get the uh, Admiral's phaser. Now we'll try and get this into camera. I'm hoping the lighting is picking this up. Paint applications here are really nice. The sculpt is screen accurate. You've got some um, gray uh, dry brushing on the, uh, on the body and the handle itself. Uh, there's some white and slightly darker grey paint uh, applications there to pick out some detail. Uh, on, on the top, it's a slightly uh, darker grey and you've got this sort of copper 
stroke bronze effect paint down the center, which I believe is screen accurate. Once again, that's replicated uh, here at the end of the phaser. Uh, same on the other side, uh, but just overall, as, as far as I can tell, that is very screen accurate and uh, very well sculpted. So uh, props to X06 there. We'll put that to one side. And finally, you get this rather nice accessory. Actually, this has got some weight to it. Um, uh, I, th I, would, I think this may very well be solid plastic rather than hollow plastic, but yeah, you get this uh, six scale bottle of wine, Chateau Picard, which you can actually read. I'm not sure if the camera's picking this up. I'll, I've got it so close into camera that I'm knocking the camera. Uh, but yeah, across the front there, it does say Chateau Picard. Uh, and there's some more uh, lettering at the bottom there, which I can't quite read, but yeah, very, very nicely sculpted. Uh, I believe this label, rather than being stuck on, actually looks like it's sculpted into the bottle itself, which is a really nice touch with this silver paintwork on, on the front there. Yeah, it's not actually a sticker. Um, stickers, especially on bottles and, uh, and, and cans and things like that, notoriously peel off with time. It's great to see that X06 have just have actually sculpted this in rather than just putting a, a, shall we say, cheap sticker on the front. So yeah, once again, some more props to X06 for their attention to detail. Um, and on the top here, you've got the, uh, a plastic top and they've actually put the wax effect in here where it's actually been sealed, uh, uh, the top of the bottle being sealed itself. So yeah, um, very, very nice work and some great attention to detail there from uh, X06 on that bottle. So yep, there you go. That's all the accessories that come with the figure. So without further ado, let's bring out the man himself. Let's get the Admiral onto the stand onto the turntable and have an up close look at him. Okay, so here he is, straight out of the box, straight onto the stand and straight onto the turntable. It's Admiral Picard, it's, it's played by Patrick Stewart. First impressions, um, very, very good, I have to say. Uh, I will add a caveat to that uh, for people who are new to the channel. I am a bit of an X06 fanboy. I've got a lot of their Star Trek figures in my collection, so uh, I may be slightly biased here. Giving a subjective opinion might not be the easiest thing in the world. Um, but yeah, first impressions are very, very good. The proportions look absolutely spot on. The clothing looks uh, screen accurate and, and well made. That head sculpt looks phenomenal, but we'll get to that. Um, what we'll do is what we always do. We'll start at the bottom, work our way up and, and uh, look at this guy a section at a time. We'll stop him from spinning first of all uh, and get him a little bit closer into shot. Uh, we'll, we'll get him off this stand at some point so we can have a closer look at the, uh, the detailing. But yeah, what you've got at the bottom here uh, on his feet are ankle boots. They're all one piece of sculpted plastic, I believe. Yeah, all one piece of sculpted plastic, as I said. No particular weathering on there. Uh, let's get him off and have a look underneath. Yeah, we've got some nice uh, 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 sculpted in grips underneath the on the soles of the shoes themselves. Um, one thing I did notice straight out of the box, maybe a minor niggle, is th because they're all one piece of sculpted plastic and ankle boots pegged straight into the legs, and I'll try and get this into camera here, you've got some good lateral movement here. Uh, but the front and back movement is is really nominal because of that uh, the top of that uh, ankle boot itself. So, yeah, um, maybe a split cut boot design there might have got, uh, been better for posing. But uh, I think it's probably a compromise between screen accuracy uh, and uh, posability. And it's not one of those figures that's going to be going into any particularly dynamic poses. Uh, but yeah, moving upwards. Uh, to these pants. Now, these pants, the colour is screen accurate, simply black. Uh, the stitch work looks really, really nice. And I know Nanjin Tam is a stickler for details when it comes to uh, to clothing, uh, getting the right colours and so on. But uh, yeah, the uh, stitch work on the side of these pants is really, really nice. Uh, one thing as well that I have noticed, and you probably noticed it's a dust magnet. I mean, this is literally out of the box and it's picking up pieces of uh, of, of dirt already. One thing I did notice straight out of the box in handling it, and I'm not sure how to best describe this. Um, have you ever had around uh, a pair of pants or a shirt, whatever it might be, a jacket that's made out of this sort of black cotton material that when you touch it, it leaves a slight mark? Because that's what I'm noticing with this. I'm not sure you can see there on his uh, on his backside. Um, when you actually touch in this, um, it, I've noticed it leaving some marks. Maybe the choice of material there could have been slightly different. Uh, but 
yeah, that's that's minor. That's probably me looking to find something wrong with this so it doesn't, as I say, turn into a gush fest. But yeah, the fall is great. The stitch work is great. Material uh, is uh, the right color and screen accurate. Let's take a look at this jacket. Now, we'll bring him into shop for this. Uh, we'll get him off the uh, off the stand and into into the camera so we can get an idea of some of the details. Now, the colour on this jacket looks absolutely spot on. It's got that gloss finish with that uh, that ribbed, uh, almost um, it's like it's like a, a mesh overlaid on the on the jacket itself. Uh, I believe this is made out of plastic. Uh, this piping here, I believe, is uh, is plastic as well, plastic or pleather maybe. Um, I would avoid maybe uh, any any particular dynamic poses uh, with this. So I'm not sure how this jacket would uh, stand the stress. Although it it it, it isn't skin tight, so uh, you know posing it like this and, and getting it's not putting a vast amount of uh, pressure on the on the material itself. But maybe erring on the side of caution. Uh, but yeah, the the cut is fantastic. Uh, the the uh, the stitch work is great. It's got a six scale zip here. I'm not going to uh, attempt to undo that on camera because uh, it's not a look I'd be going for anyway. We'll tilt this head back. Underneath the jacket is a sort of high collared black t-shirt. Uh, it's ribbed. feels like it's made out of cotton. Once again, screen accurate. Uh, on the lapel, uh, sorry, on the, uh, on the chest area there, you've got the Admiral's badge with some this nice paint application. It feels like that's plastic and stuck on. Uh, but uh, yeah, looks screen accurate and very, very nicely done. We'll take a look round the back. Uh, yeah, the quality continues around the back of this jacket. It might be, looks like it's pulled up a little bit. Maybe that's just the way it's, uh, it's been sat in the box while it was traveling on its very, very long journey. Uh, but yeah, overall, I'll take a look under these arms while we're here. Yeah, that stitch work is very nice. Overall, yeah, that jacket, uh, is very very good uh, yeah the screen accuracy is there the colors right the cuts right uh, while we've got him off the stand as well let's take a look at this head sculpt um, where to begin with this head sculpt um, phenomenal is a word that springs to mind uh, that is unmistakably Patrick Stewart unmistakably Picard um, the paint applications here are really, really good. We'll start with the sculpt itself. The sculpt itself is, is absolutely spot on. Um, down to the lines on the face, uh, the, the slightly jowly look, even underneath the neck here with the, the loose skin under the neck. Um, the camera can, can pick that up. Um, yeah, the sculpt itself I, I, is 100% almost to me. I am struggling to see anywhere where that sculpt is let down. Uh, Paint applications are great. You've got multiple uh, skin tone paint applications here. There's a slight redness to the cheeks. There are a lot, very subtle lines in, in, in the skin itself. There are bags under the eyes. Those age spots that we saw on the hands are repeated uh, on the head uh, and on the side of the face. Um, the eyes themselves, they, they are quite narrow, uh, but that, that is how Patrick Stewart is. The eyes themselves uh, are really nice and glassy. There's even a redness uh, underneath uh, and, and around the eyes, once again, which is completely accurate, and even a hint of eyelash there. The eyebrows are really well painted and sculpted, as are the furrows in the eyebrows. Uh, the hair itself, what little of it there is uh, around the back here, there's flecks of white in there, just to hint at that hair. Yeah, um, just absolutely spot on 100 percent i cannot i'm trying to find something about this head sculpt that, that's off but uh there isn't anything uh it, to me that is absolutely 100 percent accurate uh so outstanding work there by nanjin tam and the team over at x06 let's pop him back on the uh onto the stand and get him spinning again for a a, a final verdict on this guy and I, I suspect you know where this is going. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm uh, giving this a score out of 10. Mm, a difficult one. Uh, if I was scoring that head sculpt on its own, I would give it a 10. Uh, because of just a couple of minor personal niggles, and these are personal niggles, I'll, I'll, I'll add that caveat there. Uh, I would have liked to have seen a split cut boot design. Um, maybe this material on the pants here 
uh, could be a little bit better uh, or, or less of uh, one that marks when it's touched. Uh, oh yeah, one thing we didn't cover. Let's have a quick look at the articulation while we're here. Uh, the, uh, let's have a look at the waist first. Yeah, you've got a, a jointed at the waist. There's a joint at the chest. You've got butterfly joints in the shoulders, which is nice to see. Uh, no bicep swivel here, but normal joints in the, uh, in the arms. I don't think there's any risk here of, of having him in a dynamic pose and it damaging this jacket simply because uh, the jacket is very screen accurate and loose. So there's, you're not going to be putting any real pressure on this jacket, which is good to see. Uh, the knees are nice and stiff. There's a good range of motion there. Yeah, uh, we've covered the ankles. So yeah, articulation is good. Uh, so yeah, overall, where are we going with this? Mm. Okay, uh, I'm gonna have to put my neck on the line here. If I was scoring that head sculpt, I would give that a 10. Uh, I would give that a 10 out of 10, that head sculpt. It's a fixed neck head sculpt. Uh, there's, uh, there's no swap out heads here, so it's all one fixed neck. The range of motion is really, really good. Uh, you've got lateral movement, uh, you've got forward and backwards movement. Um, so yeah, uh, head sculpt uh, moves really, really well. And it's great. I, I, you know, when you've only got one head sculpt, I much prefer to see that fixed neck rather than the ugly line that comes with, uh, with having that ball joint in there. Uh, so yeah, overall, uh, I'm not going to give it a 10. I'm going to deduct some points here simply because I'm not awfully keen on this material those feet perhaps could have benefited from the split cut but maybe they were wanting to go more with the screen accuracy by keeping it all one more I'm going to, I'm going to give it a 9.5 um yeah yeah we'll stick with a 9.5 uh just because of those minor niggles but uh, that head sculpt is definitely a 10 for me so there you have it that is Admiral Picard from season three of Picard by X06. Um, and an outstanding figure it is too. Uh, really happy to have it in the collection. Wasn't gonna go down this rabbit hole, but you know, it is what it is and season three was so good. And what's a Star Trek collection without a Picard really? So yeah, uh, I suppose all that remains for me to say is thank you for watching. Uh, I hope this review has been useful. If you've got this figure, please let me know in the comment section below, what's your take on it? Um, uh, I'd be really fascinated to find out. Uh, before we zip over to the showcase as well, uh, just uh, quickly, what's on the horizon? A um, lot of stuff coming in. Um, we've got a lot of new stuff coming in. We've got a lot of uh, retro reviews coming up as well. We've got a mixture of scales, quarter scales, six scales, statues, action figures. On the horizon, uh, and uh, recently acquired and on its way to, wending its way to us, is the uh, Slice Stallone studio, uh, Slice, uh, if I can say it, Sliced Alone Shop, and try saying that after three pints. Uh, got the Sliced Alone Cobra figure coming in. Marion Cabretti from uh, the 1986 film Cobra. Really looking forward to that. Never thought I'd land that. Never thought I'd have it in the collection, but looking forward to that. That's coming in soon. We have the uh, quarter scale Paul Atreides, Prime One Studios and Blitzway statue. That's coming in soon. Clint Eastwood, Dirty Harry. We've been waiting on that one a long time, but apparently that's uh, that's coming in soon. Oh, what else? Um, uh, we're, we're venturing into uh, Watchmen territory with uh, Susu Toys, uh, Redmond Toys, Dracula Blue. That's on its way. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I could go on, but I won't. There's a lot of stuff coming in, and as I say, that's all going to be mixed in with, uh, uh, with some retro reviews uh, and other bits and pieces as well. So if you haven't already, please hit that... Uh, subscribe button hit that bell notification icon so you're not missing missing anything so from me from patrick stewart uh, admiral picard himself uh, all it remains for me to say is thank you for watching uh, take care of yourselves and happy collecting and it's over to the showcase okay quick addition before we go over to the showcase um on prepping the figure to actually do the showcase itself obviously means taking the hands off. And I did notice one thing, and I think it's fair to include it in, the, uh, in this review. If you're picking this figure up, I would say be really, really careful uh, with the white, uh, sorry, the black shirt, the black uh, long sleeve shirt that's underneath this, uh, this figure. As you can see here on this hand, 
it's actually rubbed quite and stained the uh, the hand itself. Uh, now I know this can come off, there are materials that will bring this off, but I thought it only fair to include it in this review, uh, not over uh, overlook this. It's the same with the other hands as well. Uh, so yeah, this uh, the shirt underneath this, uh, uh, this uh, jacket itself rubs. Uh, and if it's rubbing on the hands, I, I would assume there's a possibility it's gonna rub on the neck as well, so yeah. Thought it only fair to include that. So uh, yeah, thanks for your patience. And without further ado, it's over to the showcase. Thank you. 